What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome to the channel. In this video I'll be giving you the top 10 useful gameplay tips and tricks on using bows. These tips are going to be great if you're new to the game and even if you're not new there'll probably still be some useful tips in here that you didn't know. So the top 10 in no specific order. Let's get into this. Number 1 for reasons unknown to mankind, if you fire an arrow at a target close up and then immediately bash attack them after you fire that arrow, you'll do tons more damage than just a regular bash attack. Just make sure that you don't move horizontally between firing the arrow and bashing the enemy. Obviously your bash attacks will stagger the enemy, so what you can do is actually chain these attacks together. Just fire a shot and then immediately bash them for the extra damage and also the stagger effect. And then just repeatedly do that again and again until they're dead. Number 2. How to repeatedly stagger enemies. This is in addition to the previous point I just made, but you'll find that both small and normal sized enemies can be staggered with a quick shot while they're attacking, drawing their bow or sometimes even randomly. Once they're staggered they'll start to stumble just for a moment. As an archer this is ideal because it buys you a few seconds to back off a little bit. The enemy actually has an immunity to being staggered again straight away. So what you should do is wait for them to recover from the stagger animation and then attack again after that. If you time it correctly you can actually repeatedly stagger them over and over again until they're dead. If you also have the bullseye perk which gives you a 15% chance to paralyse your opponent you will give yourself more chances of paralysing them too. Number 3 How to Kite now this tip is especially useful for anyone playing on master or legendary difficulty. It becomes extremely important as an archer to learn how to kite. Kiting is basically the act of keeping distance between yourself and your enemy so they can't attack you but you can still attack them. Paired with the tips that I've already mentioned, you'll actually find that when building a character it can be more beneficial to prioritise stamina over health. Now the reason for this is that stamina gives you more opportunities to turn and run back and then turn around and fire a few more quick shots at your enemy while your stamina recovers and then just run back again. When you get used to certain enemies you'll actually learn how to dodge their attacks completely even if they're close to you. So for example moving left and right suddenly against enemy mages or archers to dodge their attacks is usually pretty effective or running around slow and powerful creatures as soon as they start winding up their big powerful attacks. Like this. In confined spaces it's actually really important you also make use of the surrounding terrain. Just by running upstairs and then jumping down again you buy yourself a few extra seconds to reserve stamina and regenerate it. The best bow for kiting in my opinion is either the bound bow or the zephyr bow, the fastest firing bow in the game. I'll leave a link on where you can get both of those in the description below. Number 4 Unlimited Daedric Arrows If you've got some time to kill you can easily accumulate an infinite supply of arrows by waiting around in solitude. It's located just here on the map. Once you're in the city just wait around the archery practice area. All you need to do is just pick up the arrows as the guards fire them into the targets. But what a lot of people don't know is that if you pickpocket and remove all of their arrows and then you just give them one superior arrow of better quality like a Daedric arrow or a glass arrow and so on they'll actually swap to firing this instead. And due to this buggy kind of system of how Skyrim works, the guard will actually repeatedly fire Daedric arrows into the target that you can pick up. And even though the guard only has one Daedric arrow, he'll just unlimitedly spam them into the target. You can also do this exact same thing with your follower, but it works a bit better because obviously you're on the move. Just give them one Daedric arrow and they'll swap to it and never run out. And then you just recover their arrows after combat for yourself. Number 5 How to Freeze Time 
It's as cool as it sounds. It's probably one of my favorite things to do in Skyrim. If you get the steady hand perk in the archery skill tree and you get that up to rank two, which requires two perks, it will make it so that when you zoom in with a bow, you will slow time by 50%. But if you also use the slow time shout at the same time after you've zoomed in, it will actually stack. So you must fully zoom in first, that will slow time by 50%, and then you use the slow time shout. This effectively freezes time, but you can actually still move yourself. I actually made a whole build based around the slow time effect and it also teaches you how to increase the duration of the effect so that it lasts for several minutes. It's pretty ridiculous and kind of fun. You can just walk in somewhere, stop time, kill a whole room of people, and then after the effect stops, everyone just drops down dead and you're just standing up like, yeah, what bro? Anyway, check out that build. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Number six. When you're over encumbered, you can actually pull out your bow, draw an arrow, and if you keep the arrow drawn, it will actually allow you to move faster. There are quite a few situations where you'll probably find this useful. Number seven, stealth tips. Arrows make noises when they hit walls, which you probably already realized if you've been playing this game for a while. So you can actually use this to your advantage as the noise will draw enemies attention elsewhere. This can be useful when sneaking around or even in the thieves guild when you need to get past somebody but you don't want to commit a murder. And then if you're an assassin on the other hand, what you can do is distract one enemy and then kill the other one when they're alone. This can be especially useful if you're using a dagger and a bow. You can also lure enemies into traps, which is also pretty funny. Number 8. Arrows in Skyrim are relatively realistic. I say that but they're not that realistic. But they do fly in an arc that means that you have to aim slightly above your target when you're at any kind of range. So the further you are away, the higher above your target you must aim to account for the drop of the arrow. However, when above a target, you must in fact aim a bit below them. This is because of Skyrim's mysterious physics. The arrow, when close up, will actually hit above the crosshair, as you can see in this example. This is pretty good information to know and understand, because it can otherwise be easy to miss when doing a close range headshot. There's probably been a few times where you've aimed the cursor on their head and then the arrow passes just over their head and you're like, what? So make sure you bear that in mind. Number 9. Skyrim does not actually have location damage. What this means is that you will deal the same amount of damage if you hit the enemy in the head or even in the leg or the knee. The only reason for hitting them in the head is style points. There are of course though mods that exist in Skyrim that you can install to change this. Because personally I really like location damage and it makes a lot of sense. Number 10. Once you draw an arrow in Skyrim, you can actually release it without firing it. Once the arrow is drawn, if you don't want to fire it, just press the sheath button. It's the R key on PC, the X key on Xbox, and square on the PS4. This will undraw the arrow. It's very, very handy when you're trying to be sneaky or you just want to conserve ammo. Anyway guys, I do hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. That's how I know you enjoyed the video and that I should therefore do more top 10 videos like this one. So if you've got any suggestions or your own useful archery tips, please make sure that you share them in the comments below to help everybody else out. You can also check out the description for other useful Skyrim videos like my build guides and the top 10 best swords in the game. Or you can just subscribe so you don't miss the next Skyrim video. I make weekly Skyrim videos 
and I have been for the last few years. Even though this game is like 5 years old now, I still find that there's lots of content to make inside it. Thanks again for watching guys, my name is ESO and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next Skyrim guide. Have a lovely day and goodbye.